So this loops us right back to the Diddy story. So this loops us right back to the Diddy story. I'm not going to say shit, but if you ask me a question, I will give you an honest answer. How about that? Absolutely. All right. I say. This is me with my titties out. I still got my panties on. This is just me with my titties out. I say, I say get into it, but kind of like. Yeah, you know I'm saying like just story. ask me questions. Just ask well, me questions and I'll answer you honestly. Well, what was the situation with I'll be sure and Kim Porter? Um they were before, madly in love. They before, were madly in love. Before Diddy came into the picture, and they, it was just Diddy working for Andre Harrell, and then it was I'll be sure still being with Kim Porter. Hold on one second, babe. Can you do me a favor? Can you go in your phone and pull up Joe to see forever, my lady? Because this is where this is where the story actually begins. Like if I was writing like an American love story tragedy, we would start with this song, Forever My Lady. <laughs> so let me so let me ask you this. So let me ask you this, Jack. Oh. What? What? So let me ask you this. What? The song was written by who? I'll be sure. And who did he write the song for? Kim Porter when she was having their son Quincy. And who produced? And who produced? Who put Jodeci out? Who was responsible for putting Jodeci out? I mean, Diddy was responsible for it. He was really the talent finder for Uptown MCA. Right. Yeah. Mm, mm, so that mm, so mm. that break so that brings us back to the question. What was the situation between Kim Porter and uh I'll be sure when Diddy stepped into the picture and try, you know, basically get I'll be sure out the way. What what, what was lingering? What was lingering in, in there the reason why Diddy couldn't go but so far? Well, if I'm gonna answer that honestly, and thank you for asking it so cryptically, um to my understanding and knowledge from what I've experienced and known throughout all of these 30 some odd years, they were married. She was married to I'll be sure, which would probably explain why she never married Diddy, even though she gave him three children. Mm. After Quincy was born, after this song, Forever My Lady was written, which is why when Al did the tribute post to her. He marked it with forever my lady. They were very much in love, but there was a lot of complications going on behind the scenes and, and the true nature of their love affair from what I understand was to be kept secret. And then, you know, shit gets malicious in the game. People do a lot of strange things for a lot of strange reasons, but at the end of the day, what it really all comes down to is just going for yours and making sure that yours is taken care of. If people really understood the true heart and nature of I'll be sure, if, if they could see him clearly, it wouldn't really be that hard to see the devil in fucking honeycomb. It wouldn't be hard at all. If you put Honeycomb next to I'll be sure, I promise you, you got Michael the Archangel and Lucifer. Mm. She couldn't have been caught between two more fucking different men. Like she literally, Kim Porter literally lived and danced on the line of heaven and hell. Dang. A man that loves you so much, he writes one of the greatest love songs of the 20th century because once you know the true nature of what inspired that song it completely changes your entire mindset and yeah. and view 
of what actually happened. If people only knew, they saw Kim coupled up with Diddy. Right. But the true romance was everything that happened between her and I'll be sure. She was loved by that man. She was loved by that man completely. And she was totally treated like a trophy and a bill with the other one. She wasn't nothing but another bill he had to pay. Hey. She was so much more than that. She was such a beautiful model. And she was very, very, very effective as an executive assistant for Uptown Records. Like, Kim Porter wasn't no slouch. And people really don't understand the gravitas of her. And when I think about her children, it kind of breaks my heart. Because I know they love their mother. There's no way they couldn't have loved their mother. Children love their mothers, period. But for her to pass away so untimely and so soon, and them to not really truly have a full understanding of how awesome their mom was. Like they all got robbed of her in their adult kids. If people only knew. Dang. So, so at the time that Diddy was working for Andre Harrell, and um, he was basically trying to take over. Explain it. Explain how he was trying to basically take over Uptown Records, and um, you know, and how you know, basically how Diddy got introduced to Clive Davis. Well, Andre Harrell introduced him to Clive Davis and once Diddy got a taste of that he didn't want no milk out the cart and he wanted to get it straight from the cow's ninny he wanted it pure and unpasteurized he wanted the full weight and considering how instrumental he was in the success of Uptown he had contacts he had all of the access he handled all of the artists but MCA for Uptown NCA to go under and there be a platform like Bad Boy ready and waiting with platinum artists off jump. I mean, come on, let's just be honest. People see money and they see comfortability. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, the true guts of that story is greed. Everybody was greedy, except for I'll, except for I'll be sure. Yeah. He was the most selfless person and loving person in that whole scenario, which is why it's kind of sick that Diddy be like, you know, he be on some bitch shit with him. Because that's just a good man. He's a good man. He's a great father. He's a great husband. You know? He's... Yeah. yeah. If people and really they... understood, if people really understood. But yeah, so Diddy got got a taste for it and he started making his come up plan and then next thing you know uptown mca you know the label ended and the next thing you know craig mac flavoring year is killing streets yeah and on the b and on the b side and at all of the underground parties and strip clubs you had party and bullshit on yeah on the biggie stage. on that they was calling it the big mac yeah and guess what kim for the most part ended up becoming the first the first lady of the corporate side <laughs> of bad boy records uh-huh take that take that you know what i mean and she did she did nobody did it better nobody could take that take that better than kim porter i promise you she was a gangster but you know years of secrets so that's why everybody's why did he ain't marry Kim Porter, why ain't married Kim Porter? He she can't. was already married. She was already married. She That's already why. married the love Dang. of her life. The paper was, ar the paper was already, you know what I'm saying, presented in the courts, and she was already on paper for, I'll be sure. So that's why I did ain't never marry uh, Kim Porter. If people fucking only knew, I guess, they know, a little, I guess they know a little bit more now. Yeah, you was explaining how, how the nigga used to control the situation with him seeing his son had him basically like on some visitation rights type of shit. Well, his son, son grew up in this home. I'll be sure his son grew up in Diddy's home because he was with his mom. Right. I'll be sure was a working artist. 
Of course Quincy was with his mom, but he was always present. There is nobody that can tell me that I'll be sure isn't a present father, period. And not just for Quincy, his oldest son, he has grandchildren, like he is present, yo. He is so present. We've spent time together, our families together. So I've seen for myself exactly what kind of man he is in his privacy. He's an excellent, he's an excellent father and a very attentive mate, you know? So it's like, of course, somebody like Diddy would be jealous of that because he's the exact opposite. Mm. He has a short attention span and, you know, he measures his life by, you know, going to Baskin Robbins and sticking his finger in every fucking car and to taste every flavor. Dang. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't say he uses a spoon. I said he uses his finger to taste every fucking carton, every fucking flavor, but all 32 flavors or whatever it is, 64, whatever it is. 31? There it is. All 31 flavors. He got his finger in every fucking carton. Or basket, basket, and at, at, ask again and Robbins. Not basket. There you go. Listen to me. Any nigga that will smash his child's ex girlfriend. Yeah, that was out of pocket. Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you something right now. That's a little bit too close. That's almost as disgusting as Chris Jenner watching uh Kim Kardashian and Ray J sex tape. Yeah, we can get. Let's get into that. Let's Actually, into that. no. They the same. <laughs> it's about the age. They, the they the same. That's some weirdo shit. Yeah. I wish I come on. I wish I would. If I had a living daughter. If I had a living daughter, I wish I would go behind my daughter to mess around with a dude that she was messing around with. That's fucking disgusting. <sighs> You know what I mean? And people wonder why I call him Honeycomb. Because he smacks so sweet and he gets soggy when he was sending milk too long. Dang. I mean, it is what it is. And this isn't me taking shots. And this isn't me, you know, going over the top. This is me just honestly being honest. That man ruins lives. He's got a gift for it. He's got a gift for ruining lives ruining lives and knowing how to profit off of it young miami better watch out i tell you that i pray for that girl i do i say a prayer for her every day i understand why she's doing what she's doing no hate no shade all i say is, is please look at his track record look at look at what he's been through and make sure whatever it is it don't happen to you she thinks she's the exception to the rule and listen to me everybody thought it was the exception Everybody mm -hmm. thought they was the exception. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Ain't nobody had Diddy hemmed up tighter than Kim Porter. Not mm -hmm. even Cassie. Not even Cassie. Period. Kim Porter, the only chick that ever had him on his heels at all. What, is, um, what is this book that, that they said that Kim Porter was going to release? Before she died I, I hear a lot of people talking about do you know allegedly, anything about this tell-all book alle look allegedly from what i've heard from what i consider credible sources she was writing her life story she was writing her life story and i'm gonna tell you something right now if she had ever gotten a chance to finish that book and publish it it would have not been good for the bad boy legacy mm. not at all it couldn't have been it could have been. What else was she going to say other than he was a bastard? <laughs> Dang. What else was she going to say? He he was a good provider. With the kind of money he was making, he better had been. And that, that and that, like you said, that that probably was the only reason why she really, you know, basically secured herself by getting under Diddy. Her children ain't never want for nothing. Right. And they and they honestly really should never in their lifetimes. Like their kids are gonna be okay for real, for real. If everything went the way it was supposed to go, oh no, listen to me. She secured the bag and not for herself, but for the future of her children. All right. You can never be mad at a mom for securing 
a bag for her kids. You can never do that. And essentially, she was a single mom. So you really can't fault a woman who's operating as a single mother to make sure that her children are well taken care of. She was a good mom. She was a good mom. She was a hell of a businesswoman. She was a wonderful model in the 90s in her young years. And she became a credible businesswoman on her own, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist. And, I, you know, it's a shame that people don't know that. So basically, she sacrificed herself just so her kids can be secure. Basically sacrificing herself, getting with Diddy. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. May the angels cover her and I pray that she is resting in peace and I pray that when she looks down on her children she is pleased with everything that she sees I pray for her kids you know the, the parent they got left with you know what I mean right that's just bad luck dang it's always the good parent that leaves first <laughs> and then you get stuck with what you get stuck with you know um He's a very controlling individual. I hope, especially his daughters, have all the oxygen that they need so that they can become the young women that I'm sure their mother would have wanted them to be. Yeah. You know, it's... Listen to me. All I can tell you is honeycomb is every much the devil that I have said it.